Hey guys, uh, I'm Cody with QNAP and I'm here with my buddy Daniel who's going to be doing a demo for us in a little bit. Hi. And I'm going to be doing a webinar today on ransomware and how you can protect yourself against ransomware with your QNAP NAS. If you have any questions, we have Nate available to answer anything you might want to know. So if you want, you can just go ahead and ask on the dashboard. So let's get into this. Um, so what is Locker Ransomware? Well, um, sorry, uh, in this webinar, we're going to be going over what Locker Ransomware is. We're going to give you some facts about ransomware. And we're going to make a recovery uh, plan for in case you get infected with ransomware. And we're going to go over some steps on backing up your files, and Daniel will do the, the demo showing you that. Yeah, so what's ransomware? Well, ransomware is a type of virus that encrypts your files, making them inaccessible, and asks for a ransom to get access to your files. And the ransom is typically paid in Bitcoin, so it can't be traced. And you might have heard of some ransomware viruses such as CryptoLocker, CTB Locker, TessaCrypt, and most recently WannaCry, among others. And ransomware can infect files on your local drives, removable drives, map network drives, and even Dropbox. Uh, once your data is encrypted, chances are you won't be able to unlock it unless you acquire a key file to unencrypt the data by paying the ransom for it. But you know, even then, uh, you just kind of have to trust the people that just infected you um, to give you the key file. And that doesn't always happen. So here's some facts we have about ransomware. 97% of phishing emails deliver ransomware. And only 42% of ransomware victims, we can pardon the train. <laughs> Uh, only 42% 40, of ransomware victims recovered their data. So some of them may not have wanted to pay the ransom and were willing to lose their data, or some, some of them may have even paid the ransom, but were still unable to access their data. 70% um, of infected businesses paid the ransom, and 50% of those businesses paid between $10,000 and $40,000. If... Uh, if many workstations were to get infected, you could see how that could, that could add up. And although that's a lot of money, it isn't hard to imagine how essential some data can be to, to what various businesses do. Uh, for example, even some hospitals have been infected, and you could imagine what a disaster would be if you lose something like patient information. That's pretty essential. But the scary thing is, is that even if you pay the ransom, you don't have that guarantee that you'll get your data back. So how do you get ransomware? Um, well, you could, you could get it from a malicious email or a, like a file that you downloaded, or you could even just pick it up by just browsing the wrong website. And while you can mitigate your risk by not opening sketchy looking emails and not downloading files that you don't trust and staying clear of websites that you don't trust, it, it's hard to be 100% safe uh, from a ransomware attack. So it's really important that you are prepared. So you're going to need to make a recovery plan against ransomware. All right, and how are you going to protect yourself then from ransomware? Well, you can start by keeping your OS and software up to date with the recent WannaCry virus, the vulnerability that was being exploited in Windows had already been resolved by Microsoft on newer versions of Windows before the outbreak, but some people weren't updated, uh, which left them vulnerable to the virus. Or some people might have had like XP, which I don't think had the updates yet until after the virus. And then even if you are up to date though, uh, you, it's still no guarantee that, that you won't be infected because you never know what might be out there, what new virus could be out, and there are things just, the updates might not be ready for that. So you, you want to be 
ready for any situation, you want to make sure that you have regular backups to your NAS. So, so you want to be up to date. So if you get infected, you're going to lose as little data as possible. And additionally, you want to make snapshots of your backups to add versioning to your backups, which I'll get into in a few minutes and uh, explain what that is if you're not familiar with that. So you're going to want to make regular scheduled backups onto your NAS. For Windows, we offer a software called Netback Replicator at no cost, which can make scheduled backups or real-time backups. If you have a Mac, you can use Apple Time Machine. And for backing up from one NAS to another NAS, you can use Hybrid Backup Sync. And in addition to backing up to another NAS with Hybrid Backup Sync, you can also use it to back up to a public cloud as well. And now that you have your data backed up in the event of an infection, you could just restore it from the backups. But what if your backups get infected? Then, then you've lost your, your recovery plan pretty much, your main way of recovery. So there are two main ways your NAS can get infected. One way is that you have a mounted folder on an infected PC. Another way is if you backed up a PC to your NAS that is already infected. Um, you know, so like WannaCry typically, you know, that's only a Windows thing, but if you're mapped on a Windows computer, then you, you could have those infected files on your NAS. And perhaps you may not have noticed that your PC is infected yet, and you might automatically uh, have an automatic backup that just backs up some files that are infected onto the NAS. And then, uh, then like any, anything that accesses it could get infected or anything of that nature. So the, the way you handle this and deal with this is snapshot. So what is Snapshot? Snapshot is a picture of your system at a point in time. So when you take a snapshot, you're taking a picture of how your files are at a point in time so that if a change occurs that you don't want, such as a virus infection, you can revert back to a previous snapshot from before you were infected. This adds versioning to your backups in that every snapshot you take is a different version of your backup. And a snapshot's not a backup in itself in that it only keeps a record of your data and it keeps kind of track of changes made. It doesn't actually make a separate copy of the data. And because of this, snapshots use far less data than additional backups and are faster as well. And snapshots, they're, they're easy. Uh, there's an easy timeline GUI to access snapshots from. You just take your snapshot with a simple click and so it's not complicated. Even if you're not super techie, there's nothing to really be intimidated about using Snapshot. It's intuitive, it's simple, but it's, it's effective though. And you can take snapshots of a single folder in iSCSI Learn or a full volume. And it, one thing to keep in mind though is that snapshots are supported in our models with AMD or Intel processors but they're not supported in our ARM processor based units. So you want to make sure you have the right NAS for taking snapshots if, if this is something that you're interested in. So if your backups get infected, you can simply restore your backup to a previous version uh, of your backup with snapshot. And now my buddy Daniel is going to going to do a little demo kind of showing us uh, what that looks like. Hi, so I'm just going to uh, demonstrate how uh, your NAS can get infected if any of your NAS folders are mounted on a PC that gets infected then your NAS can get infected and then I'm going to demonstrate how if your NAS gets infected you can very easily restore it with Snapshot. In order to do this I am going to infect myself live right now with the WannaCry virus now I have mounted my NAS multimedia folder onto my Windows machine. Therefore, when I infect my Windows, it's going to infect my NAS multimedia folder. Now let's view that same multimedia folder in my NAS. 
Uh, same folder, same pictures, multimedia viewed in the NAS, multimedia viewed as mounted on my Windows. And so I will soon infect myself. But first, I'm going to take a snapshot. Now, I highly recommend that you just set up automatic, regular scheduled snapshots um, every day, or some people might even choose to schedule them every hour if you like. But I just want to show you how easy it is to take a snapshot anytime you want. So I will go to Storage Manager. I will click on Snapshot. I'll select the volume I want to take a snapshot of. In this case, there's just one volume, so it's really simple. And take snapshot. I'll call it snap43, that's just fine. Now this message is because I have set up read write cache. It's letting me know that before it takes the snapshot, it's going to transfer the data from my cache on my spinning drives, and that way when it takes the snapshot, the data on my cache won't get left out, just making sure it gets everything. So I'll just give it just a little bit of time to do that transfer uh, because I want to make sure that it completes the snapshot before I infect myself, not after. Um, it's probably done already, so perhaps I'll just infect myself right now. So right away, when I open the WannaCry virus, it takes over my desktop, it puts all kinds of random junk in my files, in my folders. At this point, uh, I think you can still still view the uh, pictures. Um, they're not yet encrypted, but if we just wait, soon they will be. Now, this right here is their uh, the WannaCry pop-up. It's just telling me that I've been encrypted, and if I want my files back, I have to pay. This is the three-day clock. I have three days to give them $300. After that, the price goes up to about $600. And when this clock runs out, my time's up. I can't have my files back. That's just their way of trying to be intimidating. Now let's wait just a little bit longer um, until my pictures get encrypted. I just want us to see that. Now they are gone. So I just want you to consider uh, what would you do if all your family photos got encrypted? And let's say that you didn't have backups. How much would they be worth to you? Would you just pay the ransom in hopes to get them back? Now, in my case, this isn't a big deal because I've just taken a snapshot. Now, let's uh, before I load the snapshot and fix things, let's, let's view this multimedia folder. Um, as you can see, it is, in fact, infected on the NAS. We can't view these photos. They are dot .wannacry files. They are encrypted. And now before I load the snapshot, I am going to unmount my folder. Now the reason I'm unmounting the folder is because um, once I uninfect the folder, I don't want to reinfect it. So now the folder is no longer connected to my infected Windows, Windows machine. So when, when I clean out the folder, uh, when I, I bring it back to the state it was in before the infection, it should stay uninfected. So to uh, load the snapshot is really simple. Storage Manager, Snapshot, Volume 1. But this time, I am going to click on Snapshot Manager. Now, um, I want to load Snap 43. But I just want to show you before I do that, that I could load just about any snapshot I want. I could zoom out here, and I have, you know, I can load any of these snapshots here to bring um, either the whole volume, in my case, basically the whole NAS to the state it was in when I took any of these snapshots, or I can bring any individual folder or even file into the state it was in when I took these snapshots. Now, rather than revert the whole NAS to the state it was in, I'm just going to revert my multimedia folder because that's the folder that I infected. Now this part's important. You want to click on that square right there uh, next to the folder because that will uh, select the whole folder as a unit. And therefore it's going to revert the whole folder as a unit to the state it was in before it was infected. If I were to click on multimedia, it would open the folder. I could then select each and every file in the folder and that would um, 
restore the files in the folder, but there'd be no guarantee that it would completely get the virus off the folder. So instead, select the folder as a unit, click restore file. Now, if I clicked revert snapshot, it would just revert my, my whole volume, in this case, my whole NAS to the state it was in um, when I took this snapshot. But instead, I'm going to click restore file to just revert the multimedia folder. This should not take long. Uh, let's view the folder. So here you can see the, the virus is not on my folder anymore. My pictures are viewable. My folder has been restored. So if this had been uh, where I kept my backups, then at this point I would have clean restored backups, which I could use to restore my infected PC. And this is why the NAS is such a good place to, to store your backups, because if ever you have a problem with your backups, if ever um, they get infected, you can just load the snapshot and restore them. It's that simple. All right. Uh, thanks, Daniel. So once you have your backups reverted to an uninfected state, you can just wipe the old data from your computer and load the uninfected backup to restore. And alternatively, you can make and restore from complete system image backups of your PCs to allow you to bypass the reformatting process. Uh, many operating systems support this, including Windows 7 through 10. And now you're going to want to make sure that your NAS is completely uninfected. Uh, we actually have antivirus software available in the App Center. So you can just install the antivirus app in the App Center and then run a scan to kind of add like an extra layer of security. And you'll want to make sure that you've reverted any infected folders to uninfected snapshots. And of course, this is the reason this is so important is that you want to make sure your NAS is uninfected. So if you have other workstations uh, accessing that NAS, you don't want them to access an infected file and get infected themselves. So that would obviously be horrible if you have a bunch of workstations on the same network and yeah, you don't want that. <laughs> so to recap, we went over how you might end up getting ransomware. We talked about how to protect yourself by making regular backups and so that you lose as little data as possible in the event of an infection. And we went over the importance of taking snapshots of your backups so that you have multiple versions of your backups. Uh, so if, you, if a backup gets infected, you can just revert back to an uninfected version of your backup. And then now your data should be like new. And uh, we'll leave it open for just a little bit if you guys have some more questions or anything you want to ask. And yeah, thank you for watching and, and attending our, our webinar.